We're here in Las Vegas, Super Bowl 58 Radio Row, spending a couple of minutes here on Philadelphia Eagles, now by Chat Sports with Eagles wide receiver and returner Britton Covey. And Britton, last year, you're a part of the Philadelphia Eagles team that makes it to Super Bowl 57, and you're having to deal with all of the hoopla of all of the media availabilities, all of the interviews, and a very tight schedule. And now you're on Radio Row making a couple of appearances. How does this differ from obviously last year in the lead up to yeah. the big game of you actually playing in it? Well, it's not as fun, yeah. obviously. You're not going to play the big game, which is frustrating. But at the same time, I remember being frustrated that we had to do so much media before the big game. It, it's such a different game than anything you've ever played in. Like It feels like a performance almost more than an actual game. It's so... It's a spectacle, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's... You know, it's it's tough. It, it was so cool that you know I I felt so spoiled as a rookie to go to the Super Bowl, right? Um, but you you know after this year and how terrible the ending was, it it really lights a fire under you to get back. So I think it's the same way for most of the team too. You know, most of the guys are more frustrated this week and almost don't even want to watch the game because it's like a a, a reminder. You mentioned. Going to the Super Bowl as a rookie, what an incredible experience, especially for you being an undrafted free agent, having yeah. to carve your way onto the roster. And you got off to a little bit of a slow start as a returner. And then from the middle portion of last year up until through this year, you've been arguably the best punt returner in the game. I can't imagine being at State Farm Stadium last year with all of the midnight green in the stands, that ugly Chiefs red and yellow yeah. having to track down a punt, playing yeah. in that game. Yeah. Are there nerves from a human nature standpoint uh, before the game, during the game? What is that experience like? You talk about it being a spectacle, but to be a player in that game, it's got to be an incredible experience. Yeah, it is. And you, and some people are better at taking in the moment and being okay than others. Like, you know, each guy has kind of their pregame routine and things like that. And even for the big games, like some guys like the adrenaline that mm -hmm. the, the hoopla brings. And some guys, you've got to block it out. I'm more one of those people that I'm like, I'll appreciate it after the fact. I said that about the Super Bowl. I said, I, I'm going to appreciate the fact that I played in it later. Because if I do it now, I'm going to get in my head about it. And so, um, you know what I mean? I, I had to do that. But some guys, you know, like C.J. Gardner-Johnson was in the limelight. You know, the guys like that. So it's a, it's each person is unique like that. And catching a punt, you know, I remember in college when I was playing pretty much every down on offense, I never was nervous to catch a punt because you already get those bad plays out of you. you got so much you're thinking about. It's more tough to catch a punt when the first play you're playing is midway through the second quarter. Coming in cold. You know what yeah. I mean? Coming in cold physically and mentally. Right. It's, it's, really, it's a lot harder than I think people understand to, to do that um, because you only get one play, you know, to, to show something. And, and uh, something that I've had to learn, like you said, at the beginning of last year, obviously there's a little adjustment to the league and the speed of the league, but also there was just an adjustment to that. Like, you Everyone here in the NFL is used to being the star playing every down. So changing your role a little bit is you got to learn how to, to handle it. When it gets to your path as a player, it's been a pretty fascinating path for you. I remember watching you at Utah, and you just mentioned that you were playing every down as kind of a slot wide receiver. Yeah. They'd utilize you as a gadget weapon. As a kick returner, punt returner, though, I thought that you were such an interesting player in the pre-draft process because any time you got your hands on the football, legitimately you were a threat to take it to yeah. the crib and you had this innate ability to just have this patience when you would catch a punt you'd see a sliver of green light and you'd be able to hit that hole and take it to the house I remember a couple of those returns against USC they were just absolutely electric so I thought that you had a great chance as a professional player to land somewhere so when the Eagles Thank signed you as a UDFA I was really excited but as a returner you did get off to a little bit of a slow start, and I remember we're live for a couple of games, and people are like, Britton Covey looks a little bit small. He looks a little bit yeah. slow. But then there was this turning point, it seemed, and correct me if I'm wrong, where middle portion of 2020, this switch kind of flipped, and you looked faster, you looked more decisive. You ended the year as one of statistically the best punt returners in the game, and then this year, I think you were the best punt returner in the game. So you mentioned the speed of the game. Is that something that you got more used to? Mm -hmm. And what has led to you having this breakout last season and a half where you fortified yourself as a legitimate special teams weapon for this team? And I know you're trying to get more offensive snaps as well. Yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, I appreciate that. And thanks for that question because 
I always felt like it was a little bit frustrating to me when, when uh, the, this idea that like something s- flipped with me because I felt like I was just as good of a player at the end of the season as I was at the beginning. The difference was learning how to pick and choose the times that you take risks. Okay. I think that's key as a punt returner. Um, even I don't care how fast you are. You could be Tyreek Hill. There are times when running eight yards and eating up eight quick yards is better than trying to make the home run play happen around the edge, right? Especially with how fast these guys are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also, this is something that was interesting to me is I'm definitely more of a north and south returner uh, because I've watched so many returners over the years and those are always the best ones. Statistically, at the end of the year, the ones who consistently have chunk yardage, eat up yards quickly. Um, my blocking, my return unit wasn't used to someone who was kind of like that. Okay. And it's a completely different blocking style. And so it's always funny, like a lot of people thought I was just running straight into people at the beginning of last year, when in reality, I'm trying to hit a crease up the middle um, rather than, you know, gaining four yards trying to get to the edge. I'm going to gain at least eight and maybe hit a crease going up the middle. But it's a completely different blocking style. You have to stay on the upfield hip rather than turn your shoulders and give the guy a path to the outside. And so it was me adjusting to the game and then my unit adjusting to my running style. Interesting. And so as we did that, I really feel like it started to, to help. And I also did, you know, this year before every game, I'd go to all 10 guys on my unit and show them at least two or three clips from, from the week saying, this is what your guy's going to do this week. This is what he's, he's trying to release outside. If his back foot's up, he's trying to release inside. You know, if he turns his shoulders, they're punting it here. And I really felt like being on the same page with all the guys helped them realize what I was thinking back there. And they knew kind of my running style. And so there's a lot more that goes into punt return. than any, People think all the time, oh, yeah, he's quick, fast, put him back there. It just doesn't work like that. I see, yeah. I see guys all the time that happens. And then the other thing is there's always hidden yards. Like I see guys let a ball bounce at least once, usually twice per game, and they lose at least 15 yards. It doesn't go on the stat sheet, you know. So, like, for me – I want to pride myself on getting the hidden yards that no one else will really realize except me and maybe my coach. Yeah. You know, so. There really is a, not flashy, a science <laughs> to it. And yeah. then this patience where you see that hole, you got to hit it. And it's so funny from a fan's perspective, sometimes you just want to see that returner get out to the perimeter and turn it upfield. Right. But it's so hard to do that given the coverage. And sometimes like it's so, I guess, least sexy right to just dart ahead for eight yards but that's the more efficient play as compared to getting two or maybe a negative play if you try to get to the edge absolutely it's not sexy um and it doesn't mean you can't have your times when you do get to the outside but you really got to pick it i'm trying so one thing that i watch every punt across the league from every week every single even if it's a fair catch a touchback i watch every single one and i've kind of modeled my style off of what's effective and so yeah You'll see a punt return touchdown on Twitter where a guy gets to the outside and everyone will be like, man, that's got to ha-. And then you realize, like, that guy, his average is only eight yards per return because he tries to do that on every rep. You right, know what I mean? Right. And so uh, it's, you know, I definitely, I'm waiting for that freaking touchdown. I'm so frustrated. I can't wait to. The link's going to pop I mean? off, it's, man, uh, when that I'm happens. I'm so frustrated. I'm just as frustrated <laughs> as anyone about You've that, almost you know? ripped a couple. The, You've been clo- so close. The closest one was the Washington Commanders game this year yeah. when I ran into Nolan Smith. Yep. That was closer than my other big ones. Yeah. My other big ones I knew I wasn't going to score, but that one, I was, there was no one. I ran right into Nolan. It was, um, anyway, so it's, I love it because that's the role I've been given, and so I obsess over it. Yeah. And uh, I think if every player on the team thinks like that, you're going to have a great, unselfish, good team. You know what I mean? Earlier you alluded to the fact that the season just ended in a disastrous way. And I grew up in Westchester from the Philadelphia area, lifelong diehard Eagles fan. And make it to the Super Bowl last year, a crushing defeat against Kansas City. I still haven't watched the highlights. I can't go back and watch it because I'm still heartbroken about Mm -hmm. it. But the expectations were still really high going into this year. And I had this kind of theory and talking point where oftentimes there was a Super Bowl hangover, right? And if the Eagles were to have started slow this year, everybody would have been like, oh, it's just a Super Bowl hangover. hangover. It's all good. Nick Sirianni will be back. His job wasn't going to come into question. But because you started 10-1 and and then you lost 7 of 8 to end the year, 
the sour taste and that collapse is what really, I guess, put the team under the microscope where it was deemed as this epic choke job. But having sustained success at the NFL level is like really, really difficult. The team just looked a little bit slow and worn down, I thought mentally and physically. Was that a part of the Eagles' downslide at the end of the year? Why did that happen? Yes, it was. I, I, I think that a lot of times winning can not solve problems, but it can mask problems. And you have to learn how to correct things even when you win. I actually think Coach Sirianni does a really good job of it. I mean, he's, that's something I've been impressed with. But it can be tough. It's like, all right, you're 10 and 1. Doesn't mean there's no problems. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean all is well. And so, uh, as you get later on in the season, people have more film on you and take advantage of your weaknesses. You have to be willing to adjust. Now, I think the problem is a lot of times is you overcorrect. Everyone wants the big flashy change, right? I think changing coordinators was was um, really hard for our defense. Um, just speaking defensively, schematically, and but that was the big flashy change that everyone wanted. And then at the end of the season, everyone. Is saying, why did we do that? It's like, well, that's, that's what everyone wants. Right. And so you have to be willing to make minuscule, smaller course corrections, and you don't want to wait until it's game over to do it. You need to do it after a 35 to 15 win. You know, we got to fix this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's doing that. And then I definitely think we got emotionally tired from trying to figure out what the problem was. And we kept trying to pinpoint it at this and pinpoint it at this. And, um, there was some miscommunication, I think, from coaches to players. There was some pointing fingers from player to player. And there was kind of letting, you know, outside voices impact our love for the game and just the happiness that we had. And all that combined to really just kind of make us spiral. But honestly, I think that you're going to see a team this year that is going to be like, I'm not letting that same thing happen. And I'm not saying, like, just on the field performance, but I'm not letting that impact me. I'm not letting this impact me. And I think it's going to, you're going to see a lot more resilient people, players, because of it. I know I will be. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think you can. I know it's so, it's so you want to pinpoint a spot that goes wrong, right? You want to pin Brian Johnson. It wasn't Brian Johnson. You know, I'm, I definitely think we needed some changes. And so, you know, we have a new coordinator. I think it's going to be good for us. Uh, Nick Sirianni wasn't, you know, it's, it's a combination. But that answer is just not sufficient. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, but we should have done this. And. And so uh, I just think you need change, you need fresh eyes, um, but we still got the pieces. Yeah. You know, we still got the pieces this year, and uh, we got 58 draft picks. It's crazy. So we're, we're going to do something. Um, but yeah, I definitely think we overcorrected in some areas last year and undercorrected in others. Yeah. And it's not easy. You play in a city like, let's say, Jacksonville, there's no yeah. media and <laughs> fan pressure, right? Right. But I could kind of tell working in the media, and I don't like to consider myself like a journalist or a media Mm -hmm. member, but I've been in locker rooms before when things get magnified and when there is that pressure from a media market like Philadelphia, I do think that it can affect the team a little bit where they started to feel that pressure and maybe things got a little bit tight. I mean, when you've got fans showing up with trash cans (laughs) saying Slay and Bradbury, like that actually, that affects them and it affects, you know, like it's, it's tough. A poster, run the ball. Run the ball, yeah. <laughs> You love it, and the passion is unmatched. It's terrific, right, but right. you're human, right? And right. human nature does play well, a role. I, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. I talked to Jordan Mailata, and, and you just referenced this. I said, Jordan, give Eagles fans a reason to believe in this team in 2024. My reason is that you still have a lot of premier players on this mm-hmm. roster. You kind of just touched on that yep. as well. We can still be really good in 2024 because there are a lot of future Hall of Famers, all pros, pro bowlers on this team. Mm -hmm. We made some changes. There's a little bit of a fresh hint of energy maybe with these new coordinators. You kind of feel that same vibe? I do. I feel like a few reasons. One, this team learned a lot this year, and this team's going to be pretty similar going into next year in terms of the key pieces, right? And I feel like they all grew and learned a lot from the, the ending of this year. And like you said, there are things you can fix and things you can't. Something you can't fix is when you don't have the pieces. That's not our problem. Yeah. And so fresh eyes will help us, I think. And it's going to be, you know, uh, who wouldn't want to coach the offense with Dallas Goddard, AJ, Devontae, Jalen, the offensive line we have. Like you, it, who wouldn't want to coach that? Who yeah. wouldn't want to be a part of that? And so 
more than anything, I think it's just, you know, a reason to believe is just uh, we can't let that get into our heads, giving the fans a reason to believe, giving your fans a reason not to believe. We got to stay in the building this year. I yeah. think we definitely let our heads get outside the building last year. So no offense, not to you. Oh, no, but no. I'm, you it's know what I mean? Good. You can't yeah, have no, that happen I, I totally as a team. Understand. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, look, if I mess up on a show where I start to stutter a little bit, I start to get in my head sometimes. I'm totally. like, you know what? I just got to start over uh -huh. because this show has been shitty. This show has been awesome, that but it's happened great. to me before where you just get in your own head. Happens as an athlete. Uh, one quick follow-up. You talk about A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Any competitor wants more of a role and they want to do more when yeah. you believe in yourself. I want to continue to come to Super Bowls because I get to talk to people like you yeah. and do some great things here. Do you envision maybe more of a role offensively yeah. as a wide receiver come out of the slot. I thought in some of those blowout losses, yeah. I thought you popped a little bit. Yeah, they, yeah no, I do. I, I envision that. You know, whenever AJ and Devontae are out for a practice and I have to do, take all their reps, you know, I, I do really well. And, yeah. and I have lots of veterans coming up to me saying, you know, like BG and Fletch and, uh, you know, Jalen and all, Kelsey, all those guys, they come up and say, you, you know, you can play. You're, you're, you know, I hope we use you on offense. And so that, that means a lot to me. Because um, it's not just me being blind faith in myself, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and so I don't know when that opportunity will come um, or in what capacity. Even if next year I'm the receiver five again, but I get five or six plays a game, I really feel like I can make an impact. Uh, I'm not blind. I know I'm not a receiver one in the league. That's just not my body type or skill set. But I do know that I could be a good slot receiver in this league. I've watched enough Cole Beasley highlights and, you know, Julian Elman and Wes Welker to know, like, I can do that. Um, especially because I, I pride myself on just being smart. And that's like, that's what you have to be as a slot receiver who's effective. Smart and trustworthy and quick. Um, so we'll see when that real happens. I, this team doesn't need another person who just wants to play and wants the ball. And so I'm never that type of person. I'm just going to let my play speak for itself and own my role. Um, but I hope I get some chances this year. The receiver three position in this offense needs to be able to affect the game, in my opinion without even needing to touch the ball. And that's, that's kind of why I think I would be good, is um, you have to respect where I am on the field. And uh, even if I'm not touching the ball, you know, and so that can maybe take some tension off AJ and Devontae. And, um, but we'll see. I'm excited to, 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 get, to get back to work there and, and prove the, something. The wheels are turning here. I'm picking yeah, yeah, yeah. Brent <laughs> Covey in the slot, shifty, little bit of wiggle, running some crossers, maybe some downfield yeah. blocking, jet sweeps, bubble screens. Yeah. Smitty and AJ, they're pretty good and, blockers. And once again, Dallas you say that, too. and it's not the flashy thing. And, yeah. and people would be like, Covey in the slot, that, you know, you want, you want the flashy thing. And sometimes uh, that, that doesn't bug me. I, no one wanted me Danny as a Danny Amendola, so. Julian Edelman, it's, Hunter Renfro, are they all flashy? No, yeah. but that shifty wide receiver out of the slot. Yeah. Kellen Moore, you watching the show right now? Kellen, Let's get Brent Covey yeah. in the slot. <laughs> uh, tell us about Amorpho before you yeah. hop on out of here. So this is my company, um, Amorpho that I'm working with, they're, they're awesome. So the moment I put on this gear, I said, I'm gonna wear this for the, every workout for the rest of my life, even if you're not playing football. So you could wear it, yeah. So uh, I don't know if you ever saw the old weighted vest. They used yeah. to have like the sandbags. Yep, yep, yep. So I used to wear those, a little too bulky and stuff, and, and you couldn't really move with them. So this is like a revolutionary vest. I'm trying to see, yeah. Very you can flexible see material. Yeah, so yeah. You put it on and zip it up and then pull the strings and it form fits to your body. Interesting. So that you can move with it. Like I could go run routes with this and it form fits to your body. Slay was wearing this during practice sometimes. Like nice. it's, uh, it's so different than what other training things have done. And then they make shirts with these little tiny weights that go all up and down where the muscles are in the shirt, the clothes, in the legs. And uh, for me, it's just about training that actually helps. Because I see guys all the time that are just killer weight room guys, but then it doesn't really translate to the field. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you do this and then run routes, it's like you're working the muscles that are actually going to translate to the field. Right? I was telling the uh, uh, Morpho rep who's an yeah, investor huh? in the company, I'm like, yo, my running streak is approaching 300 days. I did a 300-day running streak last year, but I'm thinking about getting some weighted vests because I want to start to do yeah. some more strength training, maybe I'll get on you your level a little bit. After, yeah. I can try that on after. It's awesome. a it's good too because it's they they made the they did the science that it's just enough weight to really give you some effect and impact, but not enough to hurt your joints and not enough to change your mechanics. 
You know well, what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't want to just go and then have Especially as a wide receiver technician. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Britton Covey right here on Eagles now. Thanks for hopping on blast. here in Las Vegas. Yeah.